well, it's the first of October, <clears throat> around a little after lunch, and you can see that there's two deer there. There's actually three. There's one in the woods there somewhere, but they're looking pretty big. <clears throat> pretty nice. Three doe. I threw some corn down there last night. And that's what they're going after, corn and black-eyed sunflower seeds. They really like that. It doesn't take a little much to get them to come around. Nice, very nice deer. A lot of buck this year around. There's that third one. Right there. Yesterday when I drove up to the house with my four-wheeler <clears throat> and I came back, they were standing in the middle of my driveway. Three of them. I got, I'm guessing it was the same three. Morning, guys. It's Wednesday morning. And uh, you can see we're not the oak leaves for some reason are really not turning color but they're just going right to brown and blowing off the trees a lot of the colored leaves are already falling you can see there's a lot of leaves coming down now but uh still got a lot of leaves for the first week of october i'll tell you that's you know it is what it is i guess in another week or so we'll be all gone it seems like the really nice colored leaves happened uh the other week maybe two weeks ago and uh, now it's turning into a little different the good thing is that the temperatures they said we're going to go into the 30s but they have actually been in the 40s you know at night and in the morning like right now it's around 48 so I got to take bullseye out this morning but I'm going to be working on um, uh, the porch railing and I need to uh, stop put that uh, copper coat on them, so I'll show you how that stuff goes. Oh, beautiful day though in October. I love these days like this. Okay, uh, I got the dog for a walk. That was a nice uh, time. I really, really enjoy these fall days. They're cool enough that uh, the heat's not bothering you and stuff, so I put these spindles out here. I went up put the copper coat on these. This is all the ones that I have actually planed. I have to get some more done. Uh, the planer was giving me some grief, so I'm going to have to pick up a new planer, I believe. Anyway, um, I was down at Lowe's yesterday. Six, six dollars, and I think it's 50 cents for a freaking two by four, eight foot long. Yow. Anyway, so I'll be putting copper coat on these, and, uh, they should last a good long time then after I coat them. I'll show you how I do it when I get going. Okay, so so when I built the deck up at the White House, the deck is made out of treated lumber. And, um, you know, it, treated lumber lasts a pretty long time compared to other woods. So it's a little bit better way to go when you don't want to have to be replacing things every couple months or years even. But um, treated wood is not a uh, it's yellow pine it's not a really great wood even if you buy the number one grade of it it's not all that great especially if you're getting it at you know some of the big box stores but anyway um so here's the stuff i want to put on top of that wood 
what I have over there is white pine and it's very nice um, so I'd like to keep it as nice as I can keep it uh, so anyway it's called it's made by what's called wood life copper coat green wood preservative so it is green it looks like the treated wood pretty much after you put it on um, it says that it's for uh, preservation of wood against termites beetles and ants so protects against decay resists mold and mildew anti-wicking controls moisture control now when I uh, bought this it was around 50 bucks for five gallons I would probably say that it's probably $75 now judging by the price of lumber and everything else it's amazing how these stores they suffered a little bit at the beginning of the year and they want that money back so they're raising the price of everything to get it so whatever anyway um, it says here it's paintable and stainable so you can paint and stain over top of it once it dries now the one thing about this stuff that I will tell you it says for exterior and ground contact use the one thing I'll tell you about this stuff is it is kinda like I'll say caustic now I'm not a scientist here I'm not a um, anybody special when it comes to this stuff I'll just tell you what I know um, it's caustic so you gotta have some kind of gloves on or something you wanna have long sleeves and it tells you all about the personal protection and stuff and really if you're not used to working with things you might want to you know really read it over and do what they're telling you there <clears throat> so don't just follow what I'm doing I'm just telling you what I know about it so um yeah so anyway uh, it tells you to shake it up good so I've been shaking it and leaving it sit here a little bit and shaking it and I'm gonna put it in my pan over there soon and I'm gonna start to use it um, you're not supposed to put anything in this like don't thin it or nothing like that and that's about it the one it's made by rust-oleum now I don't know whether you like rust-oleum or not I found rust-oleum makes some really good products not all the products are what they could be but they they have a lot more than other people do so anyway I like rust-oleum stuff and um, we'll see and I know that this stuff lasts because uh, I put it on the deck and I've been watching it really closely little things that you think would happen with the wood is, is not happening it's just remaining uh, pretty nice looking yet so yeah you can see corrosive you know it shows burns so you want to take it easy with that stuff and uh, go from there so like I say what I do is I just shake it now the lids on there really good so I shake it to get whatever's on the bottom up and then I can put it into my pan and then start this paint okay so I pretty much told you what I like about this stuff but there's some things that I don't like about it and what I'll tell you now is that it really has a bad odor. That's one thing. I mean, it's not uh, overpowering so much, especially when you're starting to paint it on. But boy, it becomes pretty much overpowering. Like when you have a deck or something, it really seems to take over, you know, the area and uh, pretty much um, gives you a nasty. Uh, smell for quite a while and I'm, when I say quite a while I'm talking about a couple of months so putting this stuff in the house if you were going to use it for that and you can would be one of these things where I think you'd probably want to uh, do it a couple of months in advance before you even use the wood now you can see the color of it there kind of like a bluish green but it does turn like all green and you can use a roller for it I have a small uh, roller here the problem with the roller is because this stuff is so thin um, it seems to run easy so if you're not careful with it what will happen is you'll get a whole lot of streaks all over the place and run marks in the wood now it's not too bad you know if you're using it on a deck and you're gonna put the boards down like if you can you know if you have stains on one side of the board 
and you can put the board down and don't see it, that's not too bad. But these spindles, you know, you're going to be seeing these pretty much all the way around. So you kind of want to um, have a nice uh, coating on the wood. But you got to be careful with it because it splashes very easily and you don't realize just how much it splashes and how far it can go, you know, as far as it being so loose. So I just put it on and while it's still wet, you got to work with it. Now it doesn't dry like totally fast, but it does set. And what I mean by that is if you put the... Uh, green on here and you don't um, if you don't spread it out right away you'll end up with different colors on the wood that kind of are, are kind of goofy looking now like say on this board here there's different colors on there you can see that but that's just the stain of the wood now sometimes when you put it on even if you have a mark or two uh, and it's thick one place and thin in another it still looks good, it's just that you want to spread it out. That, that's the best thing for me to tell you. It's just spread it out so that it doesn't uh, puddle anywhere. If it puddles, it gets weird and it also doesn't dry for a lot longer time. And I try to paint with this stuff outside because, you know, I don't want the dog licking it or whatever. You never know what he's going to do. So I try using this outside when I can. I've used it in the garage a couple times for some small things. Even, even some small jobs tend to uh, make you like, get messed up from it. It, it. it just has a bad odor to it and that odor can bother you, you know, depending upon what you're used to or not when you're using it. But I like it. I really think it's a good product and I think it works. So. You can see, I don't know if you can, if you're noticing that, but it's like a, kind of like a blue when you put it on, but then it turns green as soon as it hits the wood. And you can put more than one coat on, like sometimes I put two coats on leave this partially dry and when I say dry even if it's totally dry the smell is still there so just keep that in mind that it does have a pretty nasty smell and if you're going to build a deck I what I would do is I would probably you know for my neck of the woods I would probably do the staining of this stuff in the spring and figure I'm building the deck in the middle of the summer But it coats good, you know, covers good. It goes a long way because it's so thin. But it still works good even though you put a thin coat on. You don't have to like, you know, put extra heavy coats on with this stuff. It just seems to work good. I don't even know what they recommend. I should read the can about how many coats they tell you to put on there. But I think I'll look at that as soon as I'm done with this one. Yeah, you want to watch if you put dip your brush in and come over top of the boards, you'll end up putting spots all over everything. And believe me, once you get the spot on the wood, the time it takes you to go get something to wipe it off, it's, it's not going to wipe off so easily. And sometimes that spot will show up right through the stain, right through the application of this stuff, so it'll look like there's a bunch of dots on it. So you want to avoid that. Actually, I should probably put the stain on that side the way I'm going here and just um, avoid having those issues. But I've been coming out this way so I don't drop anything on them. And you definitely want to wear gloves.
there was a slight breeze. It just stopped, but there's a slight breeze, so that helps things a little bit. Now these spindles are not cut to length, so they'll have to be cut to length, and probably when they're cut to length, I'll be uh, doing the ends again just to make sure that they blend in with and are coated all the way around. There's no sense in painting the front and the back and not painting the end grain because the end grain is where water gets sucked in. It kind of runs off the sides here, but it'll get sucked into the bottom, you know, on the bottom edge here. You know, I like real wood. I don't like plastic. I mean, they, they make that plastic decking. Ah, I don't like that stuff. First of all, it's not structural, so that means it doesn't have any strength. It can't withstand any real load or anything, and I don't really care for that. I never really used this stuff before. I actually didn't know you could buy this. One of the guys online a couple of years ago when I was building the deck and stuff um, told me about it and I looked into it and I decided I wanted to get it and I tried it and I'm surprised at how good it is. It's expensive but it's worth buying in my opinion. And there's like, you could dip this stuff. <clears throat> if you had a trough of it that had pretty much in, in it, you could dip it if you wanted to. Um, I'm not into that because I think that's more, I think you waste more than you do if you're spreading it with a brush. However, if you dip it, it's gonna probably go into the wood a little bit better. But anyway, you can see the different grain colors there and what's happening with this. You can see where it's light on the bottom and darker on the top there. It dries to a pretty consistent color, but again, it's not. it doesn't dry fast. It takes a while. And when I say dry, I don't necessarily mean to the touch. It, it just seems to stay wet within it, within the wood for quite a while. Now that may not be the right term saying it's wet, but it sure seems wet, and that's probably because of how the smell is. Show you the, the way the wood gets there, the color of it. You can see how that stuff pulls the different variations in the wood out. So, like I say, I like it, but um, it's a little sometimes difficult to deal with. So, let me see what the can says here about. Um, how many things you should put on here. It says to allow one hour between applications, so if you want to put more on, you can. Make sure all areas are fully, treat fully treated to get the maximum benefit. Do not apply with any sprayer or fine mist, and I would say no not to spray this stuff because then it'll get into your lungs pretty quick. It says it does between 100 and 300 square feet. So, but you can see how, that's only one coat on there, you can see how much the wood has changed color. I mean, there's a lot of stuff 
in there. It's, it's good strong stuff. That's the whole point. You can see how that looks blue. And then all of a sudden it turns green. You don't want to really just slop it on, you actually want to paint it on. I don't like painting actually, so I want to get it done. But I'm just saying. You know, with that breeze that we have, I can barely smell this stuff at the moment. Stop, so you can smell it pretty good. Supposed to get some rain today. They're calling for rain, but it's like a tenth of an inch, and it hasn't rained since uh, the past, I say, three days. So I don't think it's going to rain. But even if it does rain, it doesn't wash this stuff off very easily. So I'm not going to worry about that. I can always cover this if I have to. If you do drift this on the wood anywhere, like say these other pieces that are done, all you gotta do is real quick just take the brush and run over it. You know, just drag over it a little bit and it'll smooth out whatever little dots and wrinkles you may have. Now when you're brushing this on, like, I'm putting it on that top piece there, okay? And while I'm brushing it on, you can see that there's streaks running down the sides. Now if you leave those streaks on there, that you won't be able to get them off. But, like on this, this side here, you see there's, you know, stuff ran down. But as long as you brush it out, you know, as you're going here, it actually goes away. You don't see that, uh you know a little bit of run or whatever you can see it's gone already there same thing on the bottom here but if you don't like if you leave this go and say oh I'm gonna go eat lunch you come back and you're not gonna get rid of that mark that's there it just stays because it's already drying and the other stuff doesn't when you put the new stuff on it doesn't really activate it to come back to life see like right here there's some stripes in there um, that's on the bottom so if I put a little bit on there, you can see it's getting lighter and lighter, and eventually that'll blend in. It'll become so light that you're really not noticing it, but it does, you know, you do have to stay at it. You don't want to fool with this. So in other words, you know, if you're, if you're a Michelangelo painting, you might want to get another person to do it for you. You need somebody that's going to be quick at it so that it doesn't give you grief. But again, it, I, I think it's good stuff and it does what it says it's supposed to do. And all I'm caring about is that the wood doesn't warp or rot. Okay? That's all I'm concerned with.
It's amazing how it pulls out all kinds of color here. And probably when this is good and dry, if I leave it up there on the porch for a year, I'm going to probably paint these anyway. I would like to paint them white and then paint the handrails, whatever trim I decide to use on the, like for the shutters and stuff. Yeah, so spreading it out there, finish. Okay, my camera battery went dead, so I'm not sure what you've actually seen or not seen, but I'm just going to keep going here. What I was saying there, I think, with the camera, I don't know how, when it went dead, but when you're, when you're staining, and if, if, this is, if you're hearing this a second time, I'm sorry, but if something like runs down like that, you want to get on there as quick as you can. Because you can see there's two little lines there. But they sort of will go away quick as long as you get on it quick with the brush. That's, that's the thing. So it's not something where you can take your time to paint. You need to be a little diligent with it and quick. Rolling it doesn't give you quite as much a variation in the amount of stain. But the problem with rolling it is you're wasting some of it if the roll is bigger than the board is. And um, it's you're putting a lot more on, which is okay. But it's harder to move things around when you're working with a bunch of boards. Like if I put these all together and I try to roll them, I'll get them rolled quick enough, but I got to roll each one over and then you know you just you're not able to do it do like you can do with the brush so I, I like putting this on with a brush now it depends like I say on how big the board if I was doing two by sixes then I would probably want to use a roller but it depends you can see how quick that went on there and there's not a lot sticking down the sides here or running down the sides and that's what you're after you know the quicker you get it coated the more even the coating will be now I'm talking about when I say even I'm talking about being even from the application I'm not talking about evening out the colors that are in the wood because that you're not going to change. It's just going to be whatever it is. You can see how blue that is compared to the rest of the wood there. So when you first put it on, it looks like it's blue, but then in a short time, like a couple seconds or so, it turns green. It's, it's just different, you know, it's, it's really something else.
you can see that's a little bit bluish compared to the last one there. And sometimes they have that little variation. It's kind of weird, but <coughs> like I say, I like it. I just hope I get all these spindles cut and everything before winter time comes. Actually, they're plain or they're cut. It's the planing of them that's the grief. You know, I'm trying to make them all pretty much the same size. There's a little, if if I'm if I vary within a quarter or three sixteenths or whatever, I'll be okay with that. Because you can turn the post to make them all match if you want. But um, you know, if you're trying to be more fussy, then it's going to take a little more time. I have all kind of people respond sometimes, and you know, if you haven't done this kind of work, then you really Giving an opinion of how you think something may turn out isn't exactly the way it turns out. For instance, they said, uh, I, I get comments where the people say, like, put a bunch of spindles in, in the planer so they all come out the same size. Well, <laughs> the problem with that <laughs> is that the planer is only good for an eighth of an inch thickness. So if you try to plane, two boards and one's a sixteenth of an inch thicker than the other, you may not be able to plane it. It just won't take it through the machine because you have it set, you know, at a certain distance. I'm not saying you can't put some boards in and double them up. I'm saying it doesn't happen all the time. So to think that that's what you're going to do and go from there isn't really a good plan. So I just work one at a time usually. Unless, unless I've cut, like if you cut the same spindle out of the same size board or out of the same board, you might be able to take up to three of them and throw them through the planer, you know, and come up with all the same size each time. But when you're cutting them and uh, you're working with um, different size boards, and that's what you're doing because you're, you're the one who's kiln drying it, and when you're working with it, they dry differently and stuff. Those are the problems that you end up with when it comes to planing this stuff. But if you take your time and have patience and realize you're not spending as much money as you would if you were to go buy them, then you'll be, you know, able to pace yourself. Now, if you remember, that one was blue. It's, I don't even know which one it was anymore because they're all green now. What I see here is if you take the brush like I have it right now and you put like a little puddle of this stuff in the middle there, it's actually better than if you just brush it straight on because you're not losing any on the edges. Sometimes I get messed up and I just keep going. You can see how it's starting to make me cough a little bit, this stuff. It does get to you. And it, they tell you to wear a respirator. But I'm outside. And I know it's not getting to me that much, so. Yeah, the crazy thing about this stuff is you never know what color you're going to get. I mean, you can have wood all looking pretty white, and this is white pine, and it does look pretty white. And then all of a sudden you put that on and it shows the knot really good and stuff. And I actually like seeing that, you know, but that's my opinion. Not everybody has the same opinion and I certainly understand that. Normally when I do stuff, I'm after two things. 
I'm after longevity of whatever I'm working on and it's going to last. And then I'm, I'm after price. I don't want to spend a fortune on anything because it doesn't it doesn't pay you. I mean, some, you know, what's the difference between buying a freaking Cadillac Escalade and a freaking Chevy Blazer? In my opinion, nothing except for a little bit of, you know, hoo-ha. It doesn't really pay to waste the money because, I mean, if the Cadillac can't get 200,000 miles out of it or whatever, and I'm not saying that they can't, I'm just saying if it can't, then you've wasted your money if you're going to get 200,000 miles out of your Chevy. So when it comes to stuff like this I have no problem spending 50 bucks on the stuff that I put on here to, to keep the bugs off of the wood because I know it works now if it didn't work that would annoy me and I can't say how well it works with anything other than pine because pine is the only thing that I've been coating with this. I haven't put it on any hardwood because I haven't used hardwood outside really. Oh, well, I, I lied. The, uh, the uh, four by fours that are underneath the um, uh, flower boxes, actually those are, um, those are red oak. You know, I spilled a little bit of that on here, and if you don't rub it out, you know, brush it out, it will come back to haunt you. Okay, guys, so... I don't want to bore you too much, but, you know, if you're looking for something that's going to keep the wood that you cut on your sawmill nice for a couple of years or for quite a few years, this stuff seems to work pretty good. And really, uh, if you think about it, some of the treated wood that you buy nowadays, the wood is so inferior that, um, this one here I don't think is going to, this board's a little messed up. I'll stain it just in case we're short on one, but anyway, what I was going to say is, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Well, anyway. This stuff is, uh, doing good. And like I say, if you're looking to keep your boards nice for an extended period of time, I would use this stuff. Now, if you, if you stain this, like say I stain it now, and let's say it appears to be dry, if you go and start putting the deck together, you know, the handrail and all, you'll start to see it bothering your hands and everything. So you really have to let it dry for a good long time. Now, it's, we're getting close to winter. Like I say, we're in October, and I really don't have the time to mess around waiting for it to dry. It's not like I wasn't working all summer, because I was, but I'm trying to move forward. Some of the things that I started, I couldn't even finish, like the crane and stuff, which I really wanted to do, but it didn't turn out.
Anyway, what I was saying before is I don't want to bore you to death, so <coughs> that's it for today so far. I'm going to be staining the rest of these, and that's all I'm going to be working on today. And then I need to try and cut some. So anyway, guys, have a good one. And remember, this, the name of that stuff is Copper Coat. Wood Life Copper Coat. Made by Rust-Oleum, if you're interested. I, th I think it's a good product to use, to be honest with you. Well, I didn't think I didn't think it was going to rain, but it is raining, and it shouldn't last though. They're only calling for a very small amount. Well, it's always something. I should have waited till tomorrow, I guess. Anyway. I think it'll probably end up stopping. You can see it's kind of bright over in here. So I don't think it's going to last. And the clouds are really moving fast. 